Welcome to Principles of Electronics, lesson number five. Today we're going to be talking about LEDs. LEDs stand for light emitting diodes. We'll get into what the whole diode uh, part of that is in just a minute. But as you can see, diodes come in all kinds of different colors. This is just a couple of them. Mainly used for indicators, uh, lighting, um, flashers, whatever it may be in many different kind of electronic applications. There are certain characteristics to the LED that we need to discuss so you know how to use them properly. Uh, so let's get started. So first and foremost, let's go with the symbol. Since we're now doing schematics, let's start with the symbol for an LED. Now that is not an LED symbol. That's a symbol for a diode, which we'll get to later. But as soon as we add two little arrows to it, it now becomes the symbol for an LED, a light emitting diode. Now, the characteristics of this diode, uh, of the symbol, also correspond to the LED themselves. For example, you'll notice that one leg is higher or longer than the other. Now, some LEDs also, this little round cap you see here at the end, have part of that shaved off. So let's talk about those, um, those leads and that, is, that part that's, that's shaved off. One thing about a diode is that a diode has polarity, which means there is a plus and a minus. Just like a battery has a plus and a minus, an LED has a plus and a minus. And if you have it in backwards in your circuit, it will not work. Current will not flow through it. So you have to have it plugged in properly. Now, how do we identify? If you just look at an LED, it doesn't have it labeled or anything like that. But you can see that the longer lead here, or that, that there is a longer lead and a shorter lead. The longer lead is called the anode. And that is your plus side. The shorter lead is called a cathode. And that's your negative side. So when we plug this in to our circuit or we design our circuit with this, we have to make sure that our cathode goes to the negative side and our, and our uh, anode goes to the positive side. Now in this case, if we look up at the schematic, this line right here, okay, this is gonna be our cathode side and this is gonna be our anode side. So this is gonna be our plus side, this is gonna be our negative side. Now, what's the best way to remember this? I'll just give you a couple ideas. One idea is an anode can be looked at as A plus. Anode is positive. The cathode is a negative, so it's a C minus. Well, how can you remember if it's a longer lead or the shorter lead? Well, if you want to get an A plus, you better study longer. That's the longer lead. Um, Another way to, to remember it is this little cap right here, and it's not represented in this diagram, but if these leads were the same size and it was impossible to figure out which one was the anode or cathode, there will be a little bit of shaving on this ring that goes around the bottom of that diode. It'll be flat. That flat is the negative, and you can remember it usually by it's flat, and if you look at it from the top, if you're looking at it from the top, this is going to be flat and it looks like a negative. So there's two ways you can uh, remember which side is the positive and which side is the negative. And again, that's very important because you will not be able to um, use this properly unless it's plugged in properly or put into your circuit properly. All right, so let's go over then to our circuit and show an actual application. Now. I'm just going to draw the LED here. There's my symbol, and I'm going to show the arrows, showing that it is an LED and that it is light emitting. That's what the arrows are for. Notice I'm going to connect this here and be uh, to the negative. So this is the negative side of my battery. This is my cathode. That's the negative side of the LED, so that's got to go to the negative side of the battery. Uh, and then I can connect this up here at the top. Now, this will work, okay? This is not ideal though. 
and we're going to go back to our last lesson on resistors and Ohm's law to figure out why. But an LED is rated at a certain current. So nominally, an LED is around 20 milliamps or 0 0.02 amps. Those two numbers are the same. Or those two are the same, but we're going to use the 0 0.02. That's the raw number. So we have to make sure that uh, the current that's going to be traveling through this LED is right around 0 0.02. Now, so an LED nominally operates at 20 milliamps. Uh, that's 0 0.02 amps. That's the number, that's the raw number we're going to use. Now, if our current is higher than 0 0.02 amps, then our LED is going to be brighter. But if it's less than 0 0.02, it's going to be dimmer. Now, dimmer is not a problem as long as it's bright enough for us to see. But if we have too much current, and this gets it could become too bright, just like our example on lesson three or four. Uh, we don't want that. Or if we don't have, uh, if this current is too too much, we can burn this LED out. And sometimes that happens instantaneously, sometimes over a short period of time. But we want to protect this LED. And the way we protect that LED is by putting a resistor in the circuit. Now remember, this resistor is going to restrict or limit the current traveling through this entire loop. So we can put the resistor here, we can put it here, it doesn't matter. I always like putting my limiting resistors before my LED. So that's called a limiting resistor. Now what's the value of that resistor, that R? Well, we can figure this out via last lesson using Ohm's law. We know that V equals IR and I need to find R. I know what my current is, or nominally is. I know what my voltage is. So I can go in and say that my resistance is equal to my voltage divided by my current, which is going to be nine divided by 0 0.02, which is gonna be 450 ohms. So with a 450 ohm resistor right here in our circuit, I will have 0 0.02 amps and that light or that LED will light uh, nominally. Now, if we go to our cabinet and we don't have a 450, we only have a 500. Fine, we could use a 500 here. It's gonna make this a little bit dimmer because remember when the resistance goes up, the current goes down, current goes down, this is gonna get dimmer. Where we have to be careful is if we go the other direction. Now, in reality, we could get away probably even with the 330 ohm here. It's gonna be brighter, but it's still gonna protect it enough. Uh, again, this 0 0.02 is only nominal. Now, where'd I come up with that 0 0.02? All electrical components have a specification, and they will give you nominal values. In other words, what to design to. Most LEDs are 20 milliamps or 0 0.02, and that's why I use that number. Some are different, but I always designed a 0 0.02. It just seems to be the easiest way to go. And depending on my voltage, maybe I have 12 volts here. If I have 12 volts here, well, that's going to change this value. Um, but depending on the voltage, we can figure out our resistant resistor and protect that LED. Now, one more thing. If I had this in backwards, if I had this LED in backwards, in other words, my cathode was up here and my anode uh, at the bottom, no current could flow. Now we haven't gotten into diodes yet, we'll get into those later, but current cannot flow backwards through a diode. And this is a light emitting diode. So we have to keep that in mind. Many times people will make a mistake and they can't figure out why their light won't come on and it's a quick fix. You take it out of the circuit, you turn it around, you plug it back in, and the light goes on. So that's just a common mistake. All right, so that's it for LEDs. Let's go a quick review here. LEDs stand for light emitting diode. They come in a whole bunch of different colors. They have polarity, so we have to know where the positive and where the negative is. The positive is the anode, 
The negative is the cathode. And there's different identifiers that we can use um, to figure that out. When we put it into a circuit, you, I like to say always have a current limiting resistor uh, to protect it. Even if it doesn't need one, it's nice to put one in there, a low value one, just to make sure um, that you're, you're, protecting, you're protecting the part. Um, and we can use Ohm's law to figure out the resistance value based on the current that the LED can handle. All right, if you have any comments or questions, uh, leave them in the comment section. And as always, please subscribe to SpriderWeb Education.